And even when we start thinking about systems and, and cultures and impacting the culture, most of us in the church, the only thing we really have an understanding of at this point is how to take a person and help disciple and change and minister to that individual. But we're trying to, we're trying to grow our way into and let the Holy Spirit teach us how to, how to infiltrate a system out there that is indoctrinating not the one, but the millions. So God's going to have to, he's going to have to download. He will down, he will do this. He is, he is, he is going to release a strong spirit of revelation. I don't know how else to say it. That's the Holy Spirit's going to begin to raise the level of revelation. I'm using the phrase from Ephesians 1, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, but I mean, that can sound really, what's that? That's, that's Holy Spirit bringing the revelation we need to show us how to do something, how to live, what he wants to do and how we cooperate. And you can't get into the promised land and take the land without following the ark carefully enough to know what to do because you've never been there before. And religion will always cause us to fall back on what we know and find our comfort in the system. So it's fascinating to me that the word methodia, which is, we get the English word method from it, is only found, that this form of the word methodia is only found twice in the Bible, twice in the New Testament. Greek word, so it's in the New Testament. It's found twice in Ephesians. And both times it's talking about demonic activity. So what's the Lord saying? Is he saying methods are bad? Obviously not. And the word is used in other forms, in other ways, without it being negative. But I believe Holy Spirit in doing that is trying to tell us you can use methods without it turning into methodism. You can use systems without trying to systematize me. So why am I bringing this teaching? I'm bringing this teaching or I'm moving into this with, with, with this because I feel like Holy Spirit is challenging the leaders in this room. That you don't know how to do what's coming. You don't know how to steward what's coming. I don't know how to steward what's coming. Holy Spirit knows how to do that. Jesus will build his church what it needs to be and the kingdom. And our responsibility is going to have to be flexible, ears to hear, humble enough to say, I don't know. Humble enough to say, you're right. I'm not doing this way. I say, you're right. We're going to do it this way. There's a pressure that comes on a leader to have the answer. And sometimes we just need to know it's okay to say, I don't know. I don't know what to do, but he will show us what to do. Amen. So my focus when I come to a gathering like this is always to just try to tune in to what that region needs to hear or do that can help push or instruct, push them through or instruct them how to uh, go to higher levels of breakthrough, kingdom expansion. Um, my assignment is never anymore really to teach something that is for the individual. Sometimes on the posts I do, but um, I'm always thinking about the bigger picture, the corporate body or region. What can I say to help or what can I pray to lead in a prayer or decrees that can help us break through? Because 
we are moving into a, a season of real breakthrough, but we've not been this way before. When you're stepping into a new phase of your destiny, sometimes you have to step out of what you know and step into um, doing things you don't know how to do. And it can be a very tenuous, unnerving thing. You know, it, it stretches us, and the tendency is always for us to fall back on what we know, what we've learned. And of course, when I start talking like this, I'm probably, God's probably trying to use it to speak more to leaders than to those that, that follow. But the tendency is after we've walked with God for a while to methodize what he does. Because we're always looking for structure and we're looking for a system, a method, a program. And there's, there, in one sense, there's nothing wrong with that. If there's no organization, there's chaos. Amen. But there's a point in that when God is moving and trying to expand and move us into new arenas, phases um, of, of kingdom expansion of outreach, of evangelism, of, of discipling people. There, there's a dimension in which if we fall back always on what we know already as far as how to do it, we limit Holy Spirit from being able to take us from glory to glory. We just stay at this stage of glory. Does that make sense? So uh, probably, you know, 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, I was in a service like, just like any other service, nothing, just, just in the worship, enjoying the worship. And the Lord spoke to me clearly. And he said, what I'm about to do with you, you don't know how to do That's encouraging, isn't it? I'm about to give you some assignments and do some things through you, and you don't, you don't know how to do it. So I thought I'd encourage Cece. I just nudged her and said, I just heard a word from the Lord. She said, what was I? I said, we don't know what we're doing. <clears throat> she gave me that typical roll her eyes look and went back to, to the glory. But I knew what he was saying to me. I was in that place with Holy Spirit, the revelation was coming with it. You can't just do, lead what I'm about to do through what you already know. And again, that takes, that, that's un, that can be very, very difficult to do. Because the tendency is always to fall back on something in there. And so when we begin to face challenges, like we face in our nation right now, what, you, what we're going to face with con new converts and people begin to come to Christ and we're trying to change not just the way a person thinks, but we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to move into the education system and change it in the, in the government and these other areas. When we begin to do that, there's no paradigm yet for how to fix it. Does that make sense? Yes. 